Waka waka waka, what's up? And welcome back to the channel for yet another FC Finch review. And thank you so so much for bearing with me after my absence for roughly the past week or so. It was a, it was fun. Had a had a thing to do, and now we've done it, and now we're back at this. And I see that my subscriber count has grown, so I'm very happy for that. Welcome to those of you that have just joined the channel. I'm very happy to have you, and uh, hopefully we can uh, find some things that will uh, hit your fancy. But today it is Eagle Moss Day, and as you know, we kind of alternate between Transformers, Eagle Moss, and I kind of throw some other stuff in there whenever. I get into it. And so that being said, today we are going to be taking a look at the Eagle Moss Special Edition USS Enterprise NCC-1701F. I know what some people are going to say, but Finch, you've already done the Enterprise F. And my response is yes and no. I did the USS Enterprise F Yorktown refit, which was part of the Starships uh, of the Star Trek Online collection from Eagle Moss. This is an actual special edition release of the USS Enterprise 1701F from the Standard Collection, and this is actually the Odyssey class ship prior to the refit. If you remember uh, the episode where we talked about uh, the Enterprise F Yorktown refit, the Enterprise in the Star Trek Online storyline, the Enterprise F was heavily damaged in a war with the Iconians, who we, were, who we hear about in Deep Space Nine. I think we hear about them in the original series as well, but I can't recall. Um, anyway, um, so so the Enterprise F gets this nice refit called the Yorktown refit. And we're going to be taking a look at these two side by side during the comparison. Um, but initially, another reason why I'm doing this review is because uh, I had a uh, somewhat a viewer comment to me and mention uh, they wanted to see a comparison of the Enterprise F model to the Enterprise E model. And I thought about doing maybe the Enterprise E today, but we're going to save that because I'd like to do the XL first. Um, so again, if you're watching, um, I'm going to be taking the standard Enterprise E and and comparing it against this model. So there you go. So sit back, relax. Uh, we're not going to take a look at the box for this because, again, this came from the standard collection. It is a standard collection box. Uh, we've already seen what they look like. They all look the same. I'm not going to dig it out because it's buried. The ship has been on display in my collection uh, since uh, I have got it out of its uh, box. So we're just going to move right on and take a look at the magazine. And ship out of the way, let's take a look at the magazine. And there it is. USS Enterprise NCC-170F Star Trek Online Livery. That's right. And if you remember during the um, Enterprise F Yorktown re review, um, the there were two releases of this ship. Um, we're going to be taking a look at both of them. Um, not doing both of them in this review. Uh, I will show you the comparison as well. Um, so it was this version of the Enterprise F in the Star Trek Online Livery. And then there was another version of the Enterprise F in standard Federation livery um, from uh, the TV from the TV series. Additionally, hey, you know it's kind of good that we're doing the ship uh, because for those that don't know, we are in the uh, third and what I believe is the final season of Star Trek Picard. We will be seeing this ship. This is the ship we'll be seeing, um, not the refit as I understand it. So uh, very excited for that. Um, Odyssey class length one thousand sixty one meters. Launch twenty four oh nine. Star Trek Online. <laughs> And there we go. We have our instructions of how to put it on the stand. Uh, profile USS Enterprise F. Designing the Enterprise F. Star Trek Online. And there we have a nice frontal orthographic view of the ship. Starfleet. Class. Odyssey. Crew. 1600. Launch. 2409. Captain Vakel Sean. The Andorian Captain. And some nice close-up shots of the details of the 1701 There we go. Enough. Well, look at that cool shot at that nice frontal uh, underside shot of the Enterprise F looking very cool. Uh, set in a war torn 2409 Star Trek Online saw Starfleet develop a bold new iteration of the USS Enterprise. And then we have some nice details. Um, and so as I understand it, the Enterprise F is kind of supposed to be a, uh, a combination of the D and the 1701E, um, you know, ver where it's... Uh, it's it, the Federation's getting back to exploration, but of course they still need ships that can defend themselves from threats like the Dominion, the Borg, and so uh, this was a con this was a their concoction uh, for that. And of course, it was in a. This ship came from a design your design the next Enterprise contest. Um, so there we go. And uh, there's another few shots of the F. 
and there's a couple shots of what I believe was uh, the Chimera class, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, I forget, I know they have, Eagle Moss has a model of this, I do not have it. Um, moving on, again, got some nice uh, preliminary sketches of the F. Now, as I understand it, uh, the designer of the F, and you can all uh, watch uh, Trek Yards, uh, they do an interview um, with the designer of the F. Um, he designed a specific, a, a specific version of the ship, and the ship that we ended up getting, um, uh, was actually uh the, the, it was touched up by the designs crew from Star Trek Online. So and I believe they did make a another class of ship that was more homage to the original design um of the ship. So just kind of just uh something to be mindful of there. And here we have some nice side shots so you can see just how big the F is. Um actually I believe the F is supposed to be big uh, much bigger than the E. The E is like 672 meters in length. <laughs> um and of course, there we have some nice orthographic shots of the F or uh, a ship kind of like the F. Um, and then of course we have a more polished 3D model version of the F. And then of course we have the F with the uh, drag, I believe it's a dragonfly class. It's like a Defiant class starship that uh, fits in the back bay here. There it is. That's what it looks like. Pretty cool. And then of course we have the massive, massive bridge. Yeah, two floors um, of the Odyssey class. And there we have some uh, orthographic shots of the Odyssey in, uh, star in Star Trek Online livery. Then, of course, Captain Vakel Sean, nice older, more seasoned. And then of course, there we have what happens to the Enterprise F after the battle with the Iconians uh, prior to the refit. And then, of course, a nice back shot of the Enterprise F and a top orthographic view of the Enterprise F. So that is it for the magazine. And we're going to do the stand anyway, since uh, why not? Now, real quick, um, if you uh, saw my Bone Adventure episode, you know um, that uh, when this ship came out, this ship came out the same time as the Bone Adventure. Um, so what happened is uh, the stands were switched, or the, the stands that hold the ship. So um, it, you, if you have the Bone Adventure, you had the you notice that the fit was a bit tight in the cells. You had the stand for the Enterprise F. You had the Enterprise F. You had the stand that would fit on the Bonaventure. So um, just uh, something to be mindful of. So again, uh, typical, just because we're thorough, put it in and uh, it fits quite firmly. I've never had any issues with mine. And then you take the ship and you put the nacelle, you put the nacelles on there and you just slide it all the way back. And there it sits. It'll sit just fine. I've never had any issues with this ship falling off. And it looks just dandy there in the stand. Looks really nice. Kind of has a, uh, uh, let me bring the camera down. Kind of has a uh, uh, angled shot. So it looks like it's rocketing off to uh, the stars. And without further ado, let's get a good look at the Enterprise NCC-1701F. And, uh, yeah, this this model, similar to the uh, Yorktown refit, this is uh, one of my favorite um, models because of all the coloration. I absolutely love the Star Trek Online livery. Um, I think it looks great. I like all the blacks. I like kind of the the more hardcore Federation. Um, and, I, and I just love how it has, in addition to the black, it just has that nice homage callback to the time of the Federation, the gold golden days of the Federation back when they were exploring the galaxy before the days of the Borg. Um, now one thing, and you kind of notice it with this model, is uh, this side of uh, coloring is kind of thin and kind of uh, shifted over just a little bit. That was a common defect with these models. Uh, I'm not too bugged by it. It looks okay, but you can clearly see it's it's coming out a little bit here. So that is one thing to be mindful of. But other than that, um, it, this is a, such a really, really cool model. You can see you got the, uh, the double uh, brush Rusted neck. <laughs> excuse me, neck that connects the secondary hull to the saucer, or the chevron, they call this a chevron, and the chevron, of course, can lift up. This is this can, like, separate into three ships. You got the dragonfly in back, and then you got the chevron section, then you got the star drive section. Um, and again, fully painted model, no transparent plastic um, on themselves, the Bassards, uh, they're painted with this nice uh, orange uh, on the top, and then they got, like, a deeper red on the bottom. It looks really, really sweet that he's got on the side. You got NCC-1701F, 
looking very, very nice. NCC 1701F on the pennant on the side. And then you got a nice um, light blue for the warp coil section and a nice sheen of black on top. And uh, look at this. This is one of the cool parts of this. So the uh, original impulse engines were built into the pylon. So that is really cool. You can see the red shade there for the red coming out of the impulse engines. And it's really cool because uh, since we're back here, you can kind of see um, the, all the nice detail done for the Dragonfly class uh, right back here. You got some, uh, again, you got that kind of a black sheen of what looks like possibly the warp, the warp core dome. Looks really, really cool. Got some nice hints of gold back here. And then, of course, again, going all the way up the back of the ship. Again, more NCC-1701F right by the shuttle bay. USS Enterprise right there. And again, just all nice, nice sheen of black. You can just see the nice little details for the windows. Looks really, really cool. Um, A lot of the detailing on the hull, uh, on the indents on the hull, it's nice Aztec uh, detailing. Uh, again, you can run your fingers across. No no surface feels slight. You got some nice little indents right here um, for possible, you know, deck windows and whatnot. And then, of course, on the right, USS Enterprise NCC-1701F. A little bit offset right there. A little bit... Um, a little bit lighter on the color side and they got the nice phaser strip details these are embossed on there and you can see like the little what looks like escape pod details looks really really sharp and then you got the pennant um going down the center of the ship uh and then if we move to the bottom again you can see they got the nice sensor dome right here the deflector really well done you got the nice dark blue and then you got the little central gold area for the particle emitter and then you got the nice outline Line of gold looks really really good nice little um orange for the uh, it looks like a dull bronze or something like that for the rcs thrusters again ncc 1701f a little bit off center um looks really good and they got the nice combination of black and gray details looks awesome and then of course on the bottom you see a nice red pennant um deep in there and of course you got more escape pod details done in silver and then black on the bottom of the hull it looks really really good and again just a really nice profile of the ship it does kind of feel like the saucer is made of die cast um and it looks like it's connected at two pieces so or excuse me the chevron so again you got um the chevron connecting right at this point uh but yeah it looks really really superb really nice battle really you know, really a visual a nice visual piece because of all the colors that it incorporates more than the uh standard bland federation coloring so it looks really really good and for comparison, we'll do a few of them. Uh, there it is with the uh, with the Federation livery. These models both came out at the same time. Uh, pretty, I believe they're the exact same model. Um, the only difference is that this is done in a more standard Federation livery. Obviously, this is the one, uh, at least per the uh, teasers that we will be getting in Picard, the Star Trek Online version. Um, and then, of course, hold on, let me rearrange my hold on these two so we can get a nice look at the side and there we go there so again looks really good nice nice different change of color palettes and that's what will warrant a different review for uh, the standard federation color one and next let's get a look to one of our previous reviews one of our very popular uh reviews the uh enterprise f yorktown reef so you can see how that works out and again you can see that they move the impulse uh engines to the uh back of the chevron section you see the nacelles more shapely much larger you can see a lot more different color combination i think i like the yorktown reef a bit more for the colors and it's done a bit better whoa almost there and uh let's get a look at the side so you can see um, the Yorktown Refit overall a more substantial um, model than the Enterprise F. It's than the uh, standard Enterprise F. Looks really, really good. Um, and then lastly, but not leastly, let us get to the previous Enterprise the NCC-1701E standard model. So you can see how that looks. And again, you can see the Enterprise E a little bit bigger uh, for a standard model. And it has more transparent plastic details. Um, just so you can see how this, right? You can kind of see just the evolution where so where, where the ship's kind of gone. There's kind of more beefed up Enterprise E. Um, 
And if we get a look from the side again, you can see that the Enterprise E is definitely, Enterprise E definitely a longer model. Enterprise E definitely got the more substantial uh, model simply because it's been in movies and whatnot. At the, at the time the Enterprise F was made, uh, this model was only in Star Trek Online. So we are just now going to get it in Picard. Unfortunately, um, Eagle Moss, no more. So there will be no, lar no more larger models of the F, as far as I know. But I don't know who could be taking that over. So we may yet see this in the future, especially now since it is becoming a cannon ship. And I'll give you one last look at the uh, top since this was special request to kind of see how that works out. And uh, we'll do one look from the front. And uh, yes, you can kind of see how that works out. Definitely the F, uh, the wider of the two models. So there you go. So let's summarize, and there that is for the Eagle Moss Hero Collector USS Enterprise NCC 1701F Special Edition. And yeah, uh, overall, uh, you know, honestly, barring the issues with the slight offset of the decaling uh, and whatnot, and uh, some offsetting with the registration numbers, uh, this is still a very beautiful piece to have. Um, the paint is top notch, very beautifully painted ship, looks very nice, very nice visual ship. Um, it's nice to hold. Uh, Eagle Moss got all uh, the nacelles are aligned right. Um, it has just the right amount of weight to it given the size of the ship. Um, my honestly, my only complaint is that we never got an XL version of the ship, which is understandable because uh, you know this was from a game at the time. It was not a canon ship like it will be uh, sometime this season of Picard. Uh, but that being said, the ship kind of does have a love it or hate it, um, uh, as do many Enterprises um, uh, from the fandom. Uh, I personally personally love the Enterprise F. I think this is a great ship and I love the model. I'm super happy to have uh, all the models of it uh, that Eagle Moss made. And if you want one from your collection, um, you could check out realmerch.com. I'll put the link in the description um, or you could check out eBay, any other site. I mean, try not to overpay for it. But again, you know, this is a, this is a hobby of love. So uh, if you really love the ship and you feel you need to, uh, by all means, um, you know, I'm not going to stop you. Uh, but definitely a uh, very beautiful model, especially if you're a fan of Star Trek Online line or if you're just a fan of having all the Enterprise models you know, or if you like Star Trek Picard and really want a model of the ship um, this is a really great option and uh, I, I couldn't recommend it more so again I think it is really really beautiful and that being said this does conclude this review and hey if you like this channel we are growing so feel free to hit that like button on the video feel free to comment if you just want to talk some Star Trek or maybe I missed something you want to correct me that's just fine I love being corrected I love talking to you fine people um feel free to let me know if there's anything you would like to see um coming up i will tell you uh my plans uh the next set of star trek videos is probably the next seven or eight videos i will be doing the remainder of wolf 359 ships um so all those ships uh that you saw um trashed at wolf 359 uh eagle boss made models of all of those so we're gonna call this our wolf 359 saga that we'll be doing this week and for the next few weeks coming up so get ready for that it will be all federation ships they were all trashed in the battle against the borg so uh we're gonna be taking a look at all those um if you want to see that if you want to check out more videos feel free to check out my eagle moss playlist i'll put a link in the description down below and please do subscribe to the channel for more great reviews and great shorts um by the way last thing i do want to state uh, even though i typed it in my comment i am no longer doing eagle moss shorts um uh they just don't generate the uh the the uh they, they don't generate uh the traffic that i'm trying to generate with those uh transformers seems to do a lot better with that uh you those of you that watch the eagle moss reviews you seem to like the reviews more anyway and that's okay i am more of trust me i put all the work in the reviews so i love when you guys love my reviews more than my shorts because the shorts are a very small amount of work for me so again uh this is where all my love goes so i much appreciate it uh all you eagle moss people don't take offense to this um it, again it's just it, it means that you prefer to hear well uh, my thoughts on the ship and see the full review and that's what i love because this is where all the work goes so again thank you so much for watching my reviews i greatly appreciate it and i greatly appreciate talking to all of you so that's where we're going to stay as far as eagle moss go eagle moss goes transformers still will get shorts don't worry and other toys will get shorts eagle moss is just we're going to keep this to uh the business end and keep to the reviews that being said i have been fc finch this concludes this review thank you so much for watching live long and prosper